Hi, I'm Sperry Hutchinson with U-Haul. Today I'm going to show you how to install a trailer wiring kit onto this Dodge Journey. This trailer wiring kit is going to tie into this vehicle's lighting system and it's going to make it easy to connect to a trailer that you're towing because you have to have a lit, visible trailer going down the road for legality as well as to be safe and visible to other drivers. So, let's get into the install. You will need the tool seen here to complete this installation. Now our trailer wiring kit for this Dodge Journey is going to be installed by gaining access first to the back of our taillights and we're going to simply remove these two-stage plastic fasteners first prying that center up and then I'm going to use a small pry tool to remove the fasteners altogether. And then we're going to simply pull straight back and that will pop our tail light, these two fasteners out from the body and that will give us access to the plugs that we need. Okay, the dedicated kit we have here provides a converter box with a number of leads coming out. And these leads are primarily, first, we're going to connect to our, the back of our taillight on our driver's side or left side. That's what the yellow wires, yellow has L, it's telling us it's going on the left side, as well as our turn signal and uh, stop and taillight connections that will splice in here to the factory harness. We also have a green wire that we see has a good length to it. That's going to allow us to come across the other side of the vehicle and connect over to the right side. Green having an R in it tells us it's going on the right side turn signal. We also have a dedicated ground and a power wire. Since we're not taking power from our vehicle's lighting circuit, we're actually providing power to our trailer lighting that's our our four-way flat connection through a dedicated source so it doesn't add any significant draw to that circuit on our vehicle. So let's get into our connections. Okay now most of our harness and wiring is actually going to go down through this access hole behind the rear fascia on our vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and feed again the majority of this wiring except for our connections we're going to make on the back of our driver's or left side tail light down through here. And that's going to include our converter box. So, and then we want to go ahead and again identifying both the three wire brown, white, and red as well as our two wire yellow and white connectors. We're going to connect those to the back of our tail light by disconnecting the factory clips and plugs. And connecting our harness using the coordinating plugs here. Pushing in until they click, making sure we have a good connection. We'll do the same with this lower. Plug. Again, these only go one way. That one didn't make such a loud click, but it is in fact all the way together and making our final connection here on the back of our tail light. Okay. All right, next we want to install a ground on our driver's side of our vehicle and here we've got our white ground wire and our eyelet and I've identified a spot here on the inside of the sheet metal housing for our taillight. You want to make sure there's no electrical connections 
or anything behind this panel because we're going to drill a 3 seconds pilot hole in this spot and then attach our ground. All right, with our hole drilled, we're going to use the provided sheet metal screw through the eyelet into the hole to secure our ground. Still working here on the driver's side of the vehicle, we're gonna connect our power lead to the provided length of black wire in the kit because that's just gonna be a whole lot easier to drop down behind the fascia and run up front before we have all of this to do beneath the vehicle. So, we'll begin by stripping a short length of wire from our black lead here. Just about a quarter inch of exposed copper wire. We'll go ahead and crimp one of the provided yellow butt connectors. Again, make sure our wire is in the ferrule, the metal that's within our plastic tubing. Securely crimp that, and we'll make the same connection here onto our red power lead. Make sure we've got a good connection there. And we'll go ahead and run that black wire down behind the rear fascia. Now before reinstalling our tail light and moving on, we're gonna use the provided double-sided tape. And I'm going to put this on the back of our converter box. And we'll go ahead and install this box down behind the rear fascia, adhering it and securing it to the vehicle itself. All right, with all of our connections made on our driver's side, we can turn our attention to the passenger side and we want to begin by removing our tail light. Again, popping these two stage fasteners and then removing the tail light itself. Okay, back below our rear fascia here, we've got to get our passenger side connections from driver's side to passenger side behind the rear fascia here. And we want to be mindful of keeping this wiring away from hot exhaust, uh, the spare tire, anything that's going to damage that wiring. And on this vehicle, the best option is to take this wiring through this square rear cross member tube. And to do that, we're going to use a, uh, a length of wire as a fish line to pull it through. Okay, to draw that green wire through the tube, I'm gonna start by taking a length of stronger, heavier wire as a fish line and running it up and through that square cross member and finding it here on the driver's side. Because these plugs are kind of bulky, I'm going to start by actually taping them together and then connecting them jointly to my fish line. And just a short length of electrical tape a few times around should be strong enough to accomplish this. I'm going to start by feeding these plugs through on this driver's side just to make sure that they get started in a good manner. And then I'll move over to the passenger side and finish pulling them through.
All right, now I've got my wires pulled through that cross member. I wanna go back over to the driver's side before I proceed to run that passenger side harness up to the taillight. I just wanna make sure that this green wire isn't contacting anything sharp, that it's got a little bit of slack in it, it's not pulled too tight, and it won't be damaged in the years to come. All right, back on the passenger side, since I've still got my fish wire attached, I'm just gonna use this to make sure that I end up having this adapter harness exactly where I want it, above the fascia, right to my taillight housing. Now I can disconnect the tape. Okay, now we remove our turn signal connection and use our quick connect harness to make our connections to the taillight and our factory wiring. With our connections made, we can reinstall our taillights. All right, now we're ready to run our power lead, this black wire we made a, a connection to earlier, beneath our vehicle up front. It has to go to the battery. Now, I've already gone up front and identified that the battery is on the driver's side on this Dodge Journey. And what we wanna do is take care, take your time to route this wire so that it doesn't come into contact with hot exhaust system components, any sort of drivetrain or suspension components that are moving as the car goes down the road, because that's gonna damage the wire, it's gonna pull it loose, it's gonna create an unsafe condition. So here we wanna take some time. Uh, in general, you can use the factory's installation of fuel lines and brake lines to identify a safe path, because they've already done that work to find a good routing for those systems away from exhaust and driveline components. So let's get under our Dodge Journey and take a look where we want to route this wire. On our Dodge Journey, we have our muffler and our suspension in very close proximity to where our power wire is coming down behind the rear fascia. But we have a hollow subframe rail that has a hole in it. And I'm going to run a fish wire through that hole that is going to take us up and safely around all of this heat and suspension movement. I'm just straightening out some of the last few kinks remaining in this coil of wire that I had. That's gonna help us facilitate a nice smooth routing of this wiring up through our frame rail and all along under the vehicle. And now I'm ready to join this wiring to my fish tape. That's helpful when taping your fish tape and your wire to go up and over that bare end of the wire that you're going to pull, that's gonna help also make for a nice smooth transfer as it passes through that frame. Now we can go back under the vehicle and pull it through. Okay, as I pull this wire, I want to keep an eye on how much I've got remaining at the back of the vehicle. Once I feel that it's pulled through, I'll just double check that we're good back at the rear portion of our harness. All right, now where I've got this power lead coming down from the rear fascia, I wanna zip tie it up to keep it away from the muffler and so that it's not pulled so tight against that sheet metal edge, I'm gonna use a zip tie behind this bumper bracket. 
to help right, route this wire safely. Okay, with our wire now safely routed from our taillight through our subframe rail up to the front of our suspension, I can remove this fish tape since I'm going to have an easier time just routing the wire itself up through some of these existing brake and fuel line brackets. Okay, first I'm going to use this existing emergency brake cable bracket to help me get my wire established under the vehicle. Okay, now that we're through our emergency brake cable and we're ahead of the rear wheels in the vehicle, from here forward, we're essentially going to follow the fuel and brake lines under the floorboard, utilizing their routing and their brackets to run this wire all the way up front to the firewall and ultimately to that positive battery post. Since we're making a few turns here, you can only route so far before you need to stop and pull the wire completely through some of these short sections. possible, use these existing brackets to support the routing of your wire. So here I'm running the wire through an existing cavity on this fuel and brake line isolating block, this mounting block, and this is going to support the wire. Now here I've got a corner that my wire is going to turn to follow the brake and fuel lines and I'm going to zip tie this wire to this fuel line just to make sure that that wire stays right where I want it in this area. Now that I've got my lead all the way up to the firewall and in this last existing line clamp on the uh, front subframe rail, I'm going to go up top and drop a fish line down from where I want the wire to appear next to my positive terminal. Okay, I've got my fish line and my lead. I'm going to connect them. go up top and pull my cable up the firewall. All right, with our wire now routed along some of these existing cables 
It's clean, it's out of the way. We're going to prepare to make our final fusible connection here by cutting this loop that's got our fusible end on it. And we'll strip the ends of this wire back. Twist the copper cable ends, and one end we're going to insert into our ring terminal. Always making sure the copper strands are in the metal ferrule before making a solid crimp. The other end we'll insert into our butt connector. And then we want to plan smartly about how to route our wiring here. We're going to make our positive connection to this post. The vehicle's battery is mounted down and out of the way, but we have this positive terminal here. And I think we can connect and route following this heavy existing loom. So we'll go ahead and trim our black cable to match. Okay, with our final crimp connection made, we'll route our harness down out of the way. Loosen our positive terminal. Go ahead and install our, our ring terminal here. We install the nut on the post. We can relatch our cable cover there and install our 15 amp inline fuse in the fuse holder. Install the cover and we'll tuck our wiring so it's nice and neat. Okay, with all of our wiring connections now made, all that's left is our four-way flat lead that's going to connect our vehicle to our trailer or the lighting system on our uh, cargo carriers or hitch accessory. And as opposed to just having this lead hanging uh, or zip tying it off somewhere, it, spend a little extra and you get a bracket because the hits manufacturers have included this tab and this allows you to mount a, a modular uh, sort of bracket that we've got here to secure our four-way flat to. 
and the hardware comes with it. Two screws and two nuts is all it takes to have a clean and secure installation Okay, with our hardware tightened up, we insert the four pole or four way flat connector through until those rubber bosses catch on that tab that's on top and below of our punch slot there. We're simply gonna install this cover to keep our connectors clean and dry and we have a clean final installation of our trailer wiring harness on our Dodge Journey. Thanks for watching. To learn more about the product seen in this video or to schedule an installation by U-Haul Hitch Professional, visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com.